we share the loss, and let me just say this again, with the world that we share the loss of this legend. But what is it like now to be home alone, alone and lonely? Because you've all lost a lot more. My first guest spent the last 30 years with the most recognizable woman in the world. They called her the queen of television comedy, but to him she was just his wife, Lucy. Will you please welcome a very sweet, dear man, Gary Morton. <laughs> Hi, thank you, thank you. I haven't seen you in a good... A few years. A few years, yeah. yeah. What, where'd you rent that voice? I, 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 I like to think it's sexy. It is, it is. It is. It's either sexy or the last minute I'll have a talk show. No, 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 no. It's, it's, very, it's very, very sexy. Thank you. Well, at our age, anything is sexy, you can sit up. <laughs> <laughs> or lie down. Now, how are you? I'm fine. Fine. Yeah. I'm super. Lucy is what now dead two years. Two years. Yeah, and my husband's yeah. dead now four years. And uh -huh. It's a and but you moved out of California. I moved out of Beverly Hills. Yeah. Uh, I decided that uh, to live in that big house was kind of strange. You know, yeah. it was a very big house in Beverly Hills. So my dream was always to get to Palm Springs and Rancho Mirage and just take it easy. So after a while walking around that big house, I yeah. made a decision just to go and you go were, down to Palm Springs. You were married how long? Thirty years. And people always thought of you, though, as her second, as her new husband. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, I was a Thirty years, but you 30. were always thought of... I was the, I was the second husband. Uh, Desi, yeah. I, I used to call him my husband-in-law. Yeah, yeah. That, that was Desi. And I, she was married 19 years to Desi and 30 years to me. I know, but people still always said, he's the one she married after. Did that upset you? Did that annoy you? No, no. We were very friendly. Uh, I mean, uh, when I first married Lucy, uh, Desi and myself were were not that close, you know, he said, get rid of them. Yeah. But then, <laughs> but then after a while, uh, with the kids and everything was just so beautiful, we all became very good friends. They had a wonderful relationship even after they were divorced because the first year, Lucy had three series, Joan. She had the I Love Lucy show, yeah. Lucy show, Here's Lucy, and the Lucy Desi Comedy Hours. But the first year on the Lucy show, Desi was directing it. While I was married, I would do the warm up because I used to be in show business, right. if you remember. I remember, I remember. And uh, what happened after a while, that uh, he decided he was going to retire and move to Del Mar. And then I kept doing the warm-up and started working more and more with the show. Did people, I have a book coming out, and I talk about stars' husbands. Even when they're very smart, they're always considered, he's there because of her. Do you know? Did you find that? No, she, uh, I'll tell you one thing about Lucy, there was, two Lucy's. There was the Lucy of, on the show, yeah. and then there was Lucy the wife, and her, her joy in life was to make me happy. And of course, my joy in life was to make her happy. Yeah. So we had a tremendous, tremendous relationship. And I never suffered. Like, some husbands can't take it. Yeah. Well, it's you know, very what? tough, is it, to go out? No. She's always photographed. She's pulled aside. She's interviewed. Well, I was so proud of her. Yeah. I mean, I was just so proud, Joan. It was just everything. Wow. I lived for her, right. and uh, she respected me to a point that it was... Uh, even at home, it was always uh, see what Gary wants, see what Gary will yeah. do, see what Gary is. It's always thing. So she made me feel super, and I, I never suffered with. Uh, there was always a connotation that when you're married to a star, that you're going to be a uh, uh, Mr. Rivers. Right. And right. I never had a Mr. Ball. Yeah. Never. You know. <laughs> uh, so I was. You had a lot of jokes, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it, it worked out uh, very nicely. She's the one that made me feel important, and that, and that's the thing that. Uh, and also our humor. Yeah. I mean, she had the fabulous, fabulous sense of humor. Because now, little Lucy, as they still call her, poor Lucy Arnaz. Yeah, she's is, six foot three, and they yeah. call her little Lucy. I always yeah. call her little Lucy. Yeah. But she was on, and she said, but she sees it from her mother's point, you know, from her daughter's point of view. She said, my mother wasn't funny at home, and she got tremendous whack at that. But I think Melissa would say the same thing, because her mother said things like, clean up your room, get off the phone. Uh, you are supposed to walk the dog, but was Lucy at home funny? Or? Well, as, as a wife, she was funny. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, you're right, mother and daughter are uh, different, you know, because of just what you said. But at home, Lucy would do things she didn't think was funny. Right. I mean, like she would say to me, uh, she would go to the studio before me, so she would say, uh, 
I'm going to go and walk and walk into a wall. <laughs> and I would laugh. She said, what are you laughing at? I didn't see the wall. Yeah. You know? And one time we, uh, we were in Colorado fishing and we caught some trout. And she says, I'm going to make this trout like you don't believe. And sure enough, she got on the phone and called her mother and said, how do you cook trout? <laughs> So little things that I would see her doing, and coffee. She didn't mind if you, if I was having coffee, and then I would take a nap or something. I'd say, uh, she'd say, "You want some coffee?" When I when I got up, it would it, it, it would be from the morning. This is five in the afternoon. She says, "I'll I'll eat it up." And you know, I said, "Okay," and I tasted it the first time, and it took the paint off my car. You know, so. Let me ask you. Uh, you yeah, yeah. You, you have a right to ask me anything you want. John. You're going out with somebody now. Um, How? I'm going out with a, a yeah. lovely girl who is a golf pro. How can she step into those shoes? That must be so difficult for her. Because everybody now comes up to you, and you're Gary Morton, who was married to Lucille Ball, and this is the lady he's going out with. She must find it very difficult. No. Uh, the girl's name is Susie McAllister, and she's, she's adorable, and she was such a big fan of Lucy's, and she appreciates everything. Uh, we don't discuss it, and, and it's just recently that I was able to watch Lucy again on television. Yeah. Because it gets to a point when she passed away, I found it very, very difficult. Yeah. I tell you, that, was, that, that ripped my heart out. But it's just recently I started to watch the comedy genius that Lucy had. I knew about it a long time, but now I would turn to Susie and say, look at this, watch what she does here, watch her react this, watch how yeah. she steps on the grapes, or watch how she, you know, she takes yeah. the pizza and throws it in the air. What was the hardest? change in your life well it, it's uh, being alone yeah uh, you know Joan you know uh, just as well yeah. as I do that the toughest thing you open the door and she's not there yeah that's the toughest thing it's it's very tough when you're 30 years very happily married I mean extremely happy and then you open a door and it's not there anymore yeah. and it's a whole another life madam to start again yeah and and as they say the cliche time does heal you you the thing about if you lose a spouse that is not uh, not in the public eye it's a little different but now I go on television every time I push that remote there she is so it's a it's a little better I knew Lucy discussed a lot of things before she was sick and then even while she was sick you know she she had a philosophy about life and a philosophy about if she passed away and it was just so wonderful so she kind of straightened me out a little bit she did, put me down a path that I liked did she realize she was ill uh, no, that happened. That happened very. That happened very quickly. Yeah. yeah, that happened in the morning. I was on my way to the office, and uh, that just happened like that. And went to the hospital. They had to operate immediately. So it was all. Very it was. Uh, she was due home the next day, and it was that night that she passed away. Uh, she was due home the next day. Boy. But uh, there, there is, you know, if you, what, what do you say that uh, if you go, how do you go? She always said that I don't want to have. I hope she said I don't suffer, and fortunately she didn't. You know, she had the operation, and uh, it was successful. And to explain it the way the doctor explained it to me just during the night, the heart blew. Right. It was like a, a blowout of a tire. And uh, she didn't suffer that much. So that was one thing she prayed for, and it, it, it kind of happened that way. She didn't suffer. Well, I sure hope that things are great for you. Because we all do mend, Joan. and you know, when it gets... And I hope things are great for you, too. Things have And what are around. you doing? You know, I mean, I'm seeing this girl. <laughs> but are you been going with anyone? I don't, I don't know, I, I, be, 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 you're going to the commercial right now, because it's something I'm dying to ask you. Okay, 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 okay. Before we go to commercial, let's take a look at some rare family footage of Lucy given to us by Universal Studios in Hollywood as part of their attraction, Lucy, a tribute. October 4th, 5th, and 6th.
selling my jewelry and it's gorgeous, so watch. Anyhow. Oh, I must set the alarm to work. <laughs> what a show. QVC? Oh, I gotta do that. I mean, I gotta... I gotta alert the media. QVC? <laughs> Don't know. Listen, before we stop on the lesson, before you introduce yeah. the next person, you asked me something, I gotta tell you something. I said, you know, what do you do? And I said, I don't know if you like my type. <laughs> but you got to understand, I'm six foot three. Oh, yeah. me too. <laughs> and I'm Jewish. We'll raise a kosher home. There we be. What a new year. Oh, oh. Hey, happy new year. Happy new year. 57, 52. That's my age. No. <laughs> Time flies, doesn't Time it? Time flies. <laughs> now, on to the next guest, which I wish we had more time, but... You know, it's a little tiny cheap hour show. They, call, they called him the quintessential showman for 60 years. No man lit up a stage like he did. Take a look at some of these clips. Then from a jail, there came a whale. Said, none of that would be possible without my next guest. Will you please welcome Altravis Davis? Thank you. And thank you. you. I know, thank you. Yes. I, did you become Jewish? No, I just studied, though. You, I studied, but I get both holidays yeah, the Jewish is, and the Catholic holidays. Which is great. Yeah. But, uh, when you hear, like we were just talking, and uh, Gary said it's so hard, only now he's starting to watch Lucy. Yours is so much fresher. What do you do? There is this man, unbelievable showman. I mean, I watch him, and I just, you just go with it again. Does it just get you so upset still? Yes, very yeah. much so. Um, I can't watch it yet. I mean, sometimes, you know, driving in the car, I hear him on the radio. Yeah. And they play his records a lot. And, uh, that's even hard, because then I remember he just used to sing songs to me and th different yeah. things like that. And but it's very, very difficult. One thing I do want to say, though, his lovely wife taught me how to play backgammon. She always used to say, come on down, come on down here and talk to me. And she played and played and played, played backgammon. And played. I remember listening. And then she gave me a gorgeous picture with her teeth blacked out. Yeah. <laughs> she said, I only love, only for Al Pavis, I, she loves beauty. <laughs> now, speaking of beauty, what about, I have been reading in the Star and in the National Enquirer, are you all right financially? Are you not all right? Do you have to move? Is your life having to change radically? What's going on? Oh, my life is changing. I mean, um, from the day he died, I yeah. mean, it's changing radically. Uh, selling the house, the house after living there for 20 years, <sighs> has a lot of memories. And, uh, a Do lot you of have things. to sell it financially, or you just think you should sell it? I think both. Yeah. I think both, that it's very necessary for me to do that. There's and a strange thing, excuse me, darling, there's a strange thing that happens when you lose someone of fame, uh, and they think the world that they got trillions and trillions of dollars. You suddenly get another spouse, and it's called the U.S. government. Yes, that comes in. They come in and say, stick them up. Yeah. And so you, you're at a loss, and they come in and they appraise things, and they say, this is worth, that's worth, and you can't say no. Yeah. And it's a little guy that's making $32. He says, well, that's worth this. And, blah, blah, blah. and it's so, just stuff to them. Uh, yeah, it's to them stuff. it's stuff, yeah, like stuff. they did with Willie Nelson. You know? Yeah, yeah. Right, and it's things that it's not just stuff to me. Right. It's things that we've acquired and we've, uh, we've had over 20 years and we've shared over 20 years. But he was so generous. Yes. I mean, Sammy, to a fall. To a fall. I worked in the Riviera Hotel. <laughs> I went into the jewelry store, and they said, well, he's in every day buying all his friends. He likes his drummer. He buys his drummer a ring. He buys his drummer a watch. What do you want? I said, I haven't got a drummer. <laughs> I, don't want... I haven't got a drummer. I haven't got a piano. I, got a... I just have me and a lady that presses my clothes, and she's got a ring and a watch. Right. So, um, he was very much... He wanted to uh, share and... Uh, he gave a lot to a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, not only that, he does. He did a lot of charities and for kids and and things like that. Uh, like he, uh, there's a, in New Jersey, there's a Sammy Davis Jr. Institute, and in, in Vegas now they 
It's the only entertainer they ever turned out the lights for. Yeah, I know. And, and that, that one. And everybody, yeah. I'm sure, you always get champagne. I was champagne. there when they were doing that. Oh, really? And they turn out all the lights, the lights. on the strip. You ever him. seen that before? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I, they turned it on. I said, I can't see anything except yeah. the tape. I mean, it was dark, so what am I going to see? Where's the light? But um, he uh, was, he... He really wanted to show how much he cared for everybody. I mean, the show people, the show girls, and he would send them champagne just after yeah. watching a show. And he I always heard did. he he didn't like the show he did. He picked up the entire room. room. This is two thousand people sitting there, and said, "I'm paying for the whole room." I remember I, I could have hit him. Oh, oh. <laughs> I wish I had been in the audience that night. I was so <laughs> I know. He would do things like that, you know, and that's why, um, but that's the kind of human being he was. What do you, how are you getting through it now? What are you doing? Are you going to resume, sounds so dumb, your you know, career? My career, um, Do you have to go, do you want to go back? What do you, what I do, do you do want to go back. I somewhere? do want to go back to work. I do. I, maybe I'll, I'll take over your talk show. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about dating? Um, have you, how long, so dating? dead now, what? Oh, I wouldn't, th I don't even think yeah, about that. Yeah, how long has, he's gone? A, a, a year. A year. No, I'm sure you're very good looking. You, somebody's got to say you come to dinner or... Yes. Yeah. But, you know, friends say come to dinner or, you know, I wasn't ready to go out. Some days right. I would get up and even his his daughter, Lucy, she'd call and say, come on and bring your son over and so forth. And I get ready, I get dressed, because for us it's a lot. You got to do your hair and your makeup. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a guy just looks good in a blue blazer. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that I find that after Lucy passed away, Sammy passed away, I don't know if Altavis found this out, but usually when you're home, the phone's ringing all the time. Yeah. You know, when they were there. And after a couple of months, the phone just sits there. Sometimes you're in the shower, you think it's ringing, and it's not.